Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. This box I have been waiting for quite a while. Inside here I supposed to have a couple of AMD professional graphics cards WX4100, WX5100 and 7100. Unfortunately, the first package which was sent to me by wstore.sk uh, internet shop was lost by the post office and they had to send me another package. That's why my review of these professional graphics cards has been delayed so far. Still, now I have the package, so let's get it open and see what I have got inside. Even though the packaging was not very secure, I still did not spot any damage on all of these three graphics cards, thus I have my hopes that all of them are working just fine. Before I go into some basic test results, let's take a quick look at each of the graphics cards and see what I have got. Starting with the smallest one, this is AMD Radeon WX4100. It's a low-profile graphics card which is taking only one slot in weights. Nevertheless, it's coming with four DisplayPort outputs. Because of the size restrictions, AMD had to use mini DisplayPort outputs instead of the standard DisplayPort outputs. The standard ones would probably fit only two of them. Unfortunately, I did not get the full size at uh, the I.O. bracket to install into the normal chassis. I have got only this low profile bracket. I will ask W Store, maybe they have the normal sized brackets and I just didn't get it because this one was sent to me for testing. The next one is AMD Radeon WX5100. This is a middle-sized graphics card. It has full height but still only one slot and it, just like WX4100, does not have any extra power connectors for the graphics card. So this one, WX5100, is limited to 75 watts of uh, TDP or electricity consumption which will be sucked from the PCI Express X16 slot itself. Just like WX4100, this one has four DisplayPort outputs, but this time we have full-size DisplayPort outputs. Unfortunately, no HDMI is available on these cards, thus if you plan to use it with some high refresh rate TV, that might be a problem, because HDMI to DisplayPort adapters for 120Hz are rather quirky and very expensive. And the last one and the biggest one is the WX7100. As you can see here, we also get in some extra bracket to install the graphics card into the service. We are still getting exactly the same four DisplayPort outputs and it is still only one slow to design. Nevertheless, this one has extra power connector. This is six pin PCI Express connector. So you can plug in your standard power supply connector with no extra converters or dongles. I have the biggest hopes for this graphics card because this one's supposed to be somewhere around RX 580 level of performance, but we will see about that once I try to overclock them. I know for sure that WX4100 and WX5100 can be overclocked with modified BIOS. I'm not sure if the same procedure can be applied to WX7100, but to provide you overclocking results, I need to do some detailed testing and some in-depth analysis of what we're getting from these graphics cards. So for now, let's take a look at the base performance, what you can get from these graphics cards if you use them with a stock BIOS. Before I go into the test results, I would like to remind you that if you would want to buy AMD Radeon Pro WX4100, 5100, 7100, or maybe you would like to buy AMD Radeon Instinct MI8, then you can do that from wstore.sk online store. If you use my promotional code, you can get 20% discount. The promotional code will be available in the video description. And now I'm going to start with the most interesting graphics card out of the three, and this one is AMD Radeon Pro WX7100. According to the specification, this is an identical version of AMD Radeon RX 480 but for workstations. 
If we look at the Tech Power Up uh, website, we can see that the graphical processor, the number of cores, the number of TMUs, the number of ROPs, and even the memory size is identical between these two graphics cards. WX7100 is only available in 8GB version. The AMD Radeon RX 480 was available in two options, 4GB and 8GB. The other big difference between these two GPUs is the size of the GPU. WX7100 is available only in a single slot solution, and uh, Radeon RX 480 is available in dual slot design. If uh, Radeon RX 480 is coming with the three display ports and one HDMI output, then WX7100 has only four display port outputs. For some, it is a plus, for some, it's a minus. According to the specification, we can see that the core frequency between both of the GPUs is very similar. RX 480 has a base clock of 1120 MHz. The boost clock, though, is higher with RX 480, 1266 MHz for RX 480 and 1243 MHz for WX7100. It's important to mention that most of the AABs which we are making RX 480 GPUs such as ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte and others, most of them overclocked the variants to 1400-1500 MHz. Another big difference is the memory speed. WX7100 has 1750 MHz or 7 gigabits per second effective transfer speed compared to 2 GHz and 8 gigabits per second transfer speed for AMD RX 480. Looking at the 3D Mark Fire Strike result, we can see that indeed WX7100 is slightly slower. In this test, WX7100 scores 13,300 points. At the same time, RX480 overclocked to 1400-1500 MHz speed scores about 16,500 points. Here we can roughly predict the performance of WX7100, it's supposed to be slightly slower than GTX 1060 if we talk about the base configuration without any overclocking. And with that, let's take a look at some gaming performance, starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. In this game, WX7100 delivers 47.57 FPS, minimal and average. NVIDIA GTX 1060 delivers 45.61 FPS. This is not an anomaly, I have performed this test multiple times and each time WX7100 delivers slightly better minimal FPS than GTX 1060. On average, 1060 is slightly better though. I am not sure why it is so, maybe it's because WX7100 has 8GB of video memory, while 1060 has only 6GB. Another important thing to mention is that WX7100 is very quickly warming up to 83-84 degrees Celsius, and if or when I will try to overclock the GPU, I will have to figure out how to keep the temperatures in the operational range. Another tested game is F1 2021. I honestly don't know what AMD has done with their drivers, but somehow the old WX7100, which is supposed to be slower than AMD RX 480, is able to catch up with the GTX 1060. I remember that at the launch, GTX 1060 6GB was noticeably faster than AMD RX 480, and WX7100 is supposed to be slower than RX 480. Nevertheless, in these modern games, WX7100 is catching up with the GTX 1060. In particular, here we are getting 123 and 151 FPS for WX7100, while GTX 1060 gives us basically identical performance, 129 and 152 FPS. Another interesting result is Far Cry 6. Here, WX7100 is able to be GTX 1060. 62 and 68 FPS compared to 57 and 65 FPS of GTX 1060. The most reasonable explanation for this performance is the video memory capacity difference. WX7100 comes with 8GB of video memory, and as we can see, Far Cry 6 consumes about 7.9GB in this test. GTX 1060 has only 6GB of video memory, and that's why the minimal FPS and the average FPS suffers with the GTX 1060. Rainbow Six Extraction is not that demanding to the video memory capacity, and that's why GTX 1060 is slightly faster. WX7100 delivers us 61 and 82 FPS, 
while GTX 1060 is slightly faster, 66 90 FPS. The last tested game for this test will be Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Even though the game is rather old, it is still very demanding. And here, WX7100 again delivers almost the same performance as GTX 1060. I really didn't expect it, but the WX7100 shows us 54 and 67 FPS, while GTX 1060 delivers 54 and 69 FPS. The next card in line is AMD Radeon Pro WX5100. According to the specification, this is a pro version of AMD Radeon RX560 XT. But if 560XT comes with 4GB of video memory, WX5100 comes with 8GB of video memory. Just like with the WX7100, we also have the size difference. WX5100 is a single-slot solution with four DisplayPort outputs, while RX5600 XT was mostly available in dual-slot configuration. According to the specification, RX560 is the faster GPU. The base clock is 1074 MHz and the boost clock is 1226 MHz, while WX5100 has only 713 MHz base clock and 1086 MHz boost clock. The memory clock also differs. WX5100 has only 1250 MHz or 5 Gbps effective speed of a video memory, while RX560 has 1750 MHz speed which gives us 7 gigabits per second effective transfer speed. WX5100 is a single-slot solution without any external power connectors, thus the TDP limit is 75 watt, because this is the maximum you can get from the PCI Express slot. RX560, on the other hand, comes with 150 watt TDP and one extra 6-pin power connector to deliver this extra 75 watt of electricity. Nevertheless, I have a hope that I will be able to overclock my WX5100 to achieve about the same level of performance. Comparing the 3D Mark V strike results, we can see that WX5100 is indeed slower than RX560. WX5100 scores about 6782 points, while RX560 gives us 7969 points. With this score, I expect uh, Radeon Pro WX5100 to be about half as fast compared to GTX 1060. And Assassin's Creed Valhalla shows us exactly this. WX5100 delivers 25 and 36 FPS, while GTX 1060 is able to render 4561 FPS. I can also mention that just like 7100, WX5100 is also warming up to 84-85 degrees Celsius very quickly. Nevertheless, the graphics card was almost silent, thus I have a hope that when I will attempt to overclock the GPU, I can easily ramp up the fan to get some better cooling performance. F1 2021 is a less demanding game, so here WX5100 is able to render 6277 FPS. Still, it was just half of the GTX 1060 performance, which delivers us 129 and 152 FPS. Another interesting thing to mention here is that WX5100 is constantly keeping its clock lower than 700 MHz. This can indicate that the GPU core is not able to receive enough data from the video memory to do some useful work. In other words, the video memory is too slow to provide enough load to the GPU core clock and that's why GPU core clock drops. Far Cry 6 and WX5100 is still half as fast as GTX 1060. 32.38 FPS in comparison to 57.65 FPS. Even though WX5100 counts with 8GB of video memory while GTX 1060 has only 6GB of video memory, the GPU itself is just way too slow to get advantage of this extra 2 gigs of video memory. Rainbow Six Extraction doesn't change anything. WX5100 gives us 2941 FPS, while GTX 1060 renders 6690 FPS. And once again we see that WX5100 is not maintaining its maximum boost clock, even though the temperatures allow it. The last tested game is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and as expected, WX5100 is still slower than GTX 1060. 
2936 FPS in comparison to 5469 FPS. So roughly WX5100 as expected is half as fast compared to GTX 1060. I really hope that overclocking the video memory will give some extra juice and extra performance to WX5100, but this I will do in my next video. And the last GPU I have to go through is AMD Radeon Pro WX4100. According to the specification, this is a pro version of consumer AMD Radeon RX 460 1024 SP. But if RX 460 was available with only 2 GB of video memory, WX4100 has 4 GB of video memory. The other difference is the physical size. WX4100 is a low-profile graphics card with a single slot design. At the same time, RX 460 was available mostly in dual slot solution and with full height. WX4100 also has four video outputs and they are mini display ports. RX 460 was mostly available with three video outputs, one was display port, HDMI and DVI. The core clock between these two GPUs is very similar. WX4100 has 1125 MHz base clock and 1201 MHz boost clock. RX460 comes with a 1090 MHz base clock and 1200 MHz boost clock. So the core clock frequency is basically the same, but the memory speed with the WX4100 is only 1.5 GHz or 6 gigabits per second transfer speed. RX460 on the other hand has 1750 MHz speed or 7 gigabits per second transfer speed. That's why RX460 will be slightly faster, especially when it comes to gaming. All in all, it's a rather slow GPU and I don't expect it to be able to play the latest and greatest games, but according to the Tech Power Up chart, we can see that WX4100 is somewhere around the GTX 480 level of performance. I remember back in the days I had GTX 460 and that GPU was enough to play such great games as Battlefield 4 and Far Cry 3. So if you're playing older games and you want to assemble ultra compact and low power gaming computer, then WX4100 might be an interesting option. Here I plan to show 3D Mark V strike results and then go into the gaming benchmarks, but unfortunately my WX4100 doesn't work. The GPU came to me in an AMD sealed package and it does not have any physical damage, but it just doesn't work. I have tried all possible solutions, tested different motherboards, I have also tried PC Express riser, the GPU simply doesn't work. Of course, WStore will solve this problem for me, but it means that for now I am not able to provide you any benchmark numbers, since my WX4100 is simply dead on arrival. As you can see, out of the box performance of these WX4151 and 7100 GPUs is not mind blowing. Still, I believe these three GPUs have their own unique niche where they can be used. For example, this little guy can fit in basically anything and will provide you four DisplayPort outputs, which is very nice. The same can be said about the 5100 and uh, the 7100. 5100 does not require any extra power connectors and both of them are coming with four DisplayPort outputs. Sure, the most interesting results will be after I do overclocking of these GPUs and try to squeeze as much performance as possible, but that's gonna come in the next video. For now, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.